And this brings us to the next question believers need clarification on. Is prostrating a metaphor or prostrating on the chin a metaphor? Some say that rukur and sujud have two types of meaning. One, a physical meaning, and two, a metaphorical meaning. They say that the meaning of the metaphorical rukur means mental humility, and sujud means submission conceptual, non-physical, metaphorical, instead of kneeling and prostrating. So the answer to this question will also answer the previous salah position, ruku', kneeling, if it's a metaphor or not. And no, sujud is not a metaphor in Surah 4 verse 102 and all the other places that we'll see. And there are two obvious reasons. One, Surah 4 verse 102 and other verses that we will see are not mutashabihat allegorical, ambiguous, metaphorical verses. And two, basic Arabic grammar. Allah chose the Arabic language for a reason. Arabic grammar provides justifications, if you know, and Allah knows best. In Arabic, nouns are divided into two categories that do not exist in the English language. Arabic nouns are either rational, animacy, or irrational, inanimate. Rational, animacy nouns are those which refer to human beings, angels, and genes, devils. They are also called intelligent, or thinking, or reasoning nouns, aqil. But their status may change depending on the usage, especially with personification. Irrational, inanimate nouns are those which refer to non-human beings. They are also called non-intelligent, unthinking, or irrational nouns, ghayru aqil. Irrational, inanimate nouns refer to non-living objects, animals, concepts, metaphors, and non-human beings like trees, plants, etc. Metaphor is a concept and it belongs with the category of irrational, inanimate nouns. Thus, if we were to interpret sujud or rukur as metaphors, meaning mental humility and submission, then they have to obey the rules of agreement in Arabic of irrational, inanimate nouns. And that is, all plural irrational inanimate nouns, not referring to human beings, in other words, metaphors, are considered to be grammatically feminine singular. So anything that has to agree in some way with a non-human plural will always be feminine singular. Adjectives, pronouns, demonstratives, and verbs will always be put in the feminine singular whenever they must agree with a non-human plural. Notice that the verb sujud in Surah 4 verse 102 is in the masculine plural, past tense, sajadu. This is describing human beings grammatically because of the masculine plural conjugation. If the verb sujud here were to be a metaphor, it must be conjugated in the feminine singular, sajadat. Sujud would then be undisputed as a metaphor, but it's not. Therefore, it's impossible that sajadu those who prostrated in Surah 4 verse 102 is a metaphor. Instead, sajadu is a clear physical human-related movement, those who prostrated in this context. There's actually much more to back this up. This will answer another related question. Is prostrating on the chin a metaphor? Say, believe in it or do not believe. Indeed, those who were given the knowledge from before it when it's recited to them, they fall down prostrate on the chins. Before I prove to you grammatically that this is not metaphorical again, you should have noticed that I translated lin adhaqan as on the chins and not to the chins, even though ala on isn't mentioned. This interpretation based on context is interchangeable. You have a clear example of this in Surah 4 verse 103, the next verse of the two raka'atain, sets, verse, and in Surah 10 verse 12. So verse 103, So remember, mention Allah standing and sitting and on your sides, wa'ala junubikum, and in Surah 10 verse 12. 
He prayed, invoked us on his side. As you can see, Ala Junubikum or Li Jan on your or his side. The preposition li or ala are interchangeable based on context and have the same meaning. Again, this is very obvious and you should be able to hear it in Arabic. So Surah 17 verse 107, they fall down prostrate on the chins. Is not metaphorical. For the same reason it's not metaphorical for sajadu in Surah 4 verse 102. Sujada. The last word in Surah 17 verse 107 is a masculine plural adjective, an active participle, of the plural masculine noun chins, adqan, which is not feminine singular. If chins, adqan, being a plural noun, were to be a metaphor, a concept making it an irrational inanimate noun, not referring to human beings, then the adjective must be considered to be grammatically feminine singular. Sajida, which is not the case and never found in the Quran. It is therefore impossible that Lil Adhaqani Sujada in Surah 17 verse 107 is metaphorical. Instead, Lil Adhaqani Sujada is a clear physical human related position, prostrate on the chins. This is undisputed and this once again exposes all those who either have basic or no knowledge of Arabic grammar. And it's obvious for those who know, and Allah knows best. Surah 17 verse 107 is a believe it or not verse, and it's a muhkama, reinforced straightforward verse, to fall prostrate on the chin, and not allegorical, metaphorical, mutashabiha. This grammatically ends this debate, and Allah knows best. Here are some depictions of ancient Sumerians, Babylonians, and ancient Egyptians prostrating on their chins, which is not a new thing. Notice how their chins are further from their knees. This is how you properly prostrate, sujud, on the chin. And the closer your chin is to your knees, the more difficult it is. So being further away from your knees makes it easier to do while being comfortable. To prostrate on the chin is actually excellent for you as it has many health benefits 